Hello and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes and just to let you know that this podcast is available to listen to to download on iTunes Spotify Tune in, uh, Stitcher, other ones, Castbox, uh, the main, well, basically all of my podcasts are available on Spreaker, all of them, or thirty-three, I think there are. And uh, I upload or update rather the pod, the website, the Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. Every time I release a new recording, and my main website is jasonnewland dot com, where everything I do is available. That's a lot of information, isn't it? Also, oh, there's more. There's more. There is more. Yeah. I've also got other sleep podcasts that you may like to listen to. One is called Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis. The podcast for that is deepsleepwhisper.com. Rather, that's the website. Uh, And another one is um, a weekly one I do every Friday, which is called Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. Very original name. Uh, But that's sleephypnosisweekly.com. That's the website for that. I've also got a couple of other podcasts I've got lots actually but I've got a couple of podcasts where every single insomnia session or sleep session that I've made is on one is uh, sleep deeply with hypnosis so these are things you can google if you just put my name into Google, Jason Newland, or Jason Newland Hypnosis, or Jason Newland Sleep, lots of stuff will come up. I'm all over the shop. I am. I'm everywhere. I think it must be quite annoying for, uh, there's a couple of people with the same name as me. And... I'm the, if you put my name into Google, I'm the one at the top, and I'm the one that takes up the most space, but there's a doctor on there, and he's a a paediatrist, and he, he's uh, basically, he's a doctor looking after children, and really he should be at the top, but I am. So there you go, but there's also a, a cage fighter, like a UFC something, uh, and he's uh, he's got the same name as me as well. So that must be I don't know. I'm not supposed. I suppose everybody Google's themselves. I know I do, but I just like to see what's you know coming up and. And this is my life, so you know I'm constantly 
online checking to see where I'm ranked and it's a weird word isn't it rank ranked and um, just to see what pictures are on there what images this image <laughs> this image is from me from 2006 there's a black and white picture of a video that I did which is on is it daily motion uh, it's a video site I don't think like three people use that website now but I've got you know is it amazing that YouTube is dominated absolutely dominated video online YouTube it's there was a time and you may remember this but going back this you know it's not that long ago but there was a time when there was lots of video sites loads and I suppose you know they were trying to compete with YouTube they saw that YouTube was popular and loads of video sites where you, you know I was uploading my hypnosis videos everywhere and one by one they just closed the websites closed or they're just there but no one uses them a bit like MySpace you know MySpace was brilliant personally I think it was better than Facebook for people that were producing videos and music and you know mp3s like myself and it was a great community very a lot of support quite a positive place actually I found because I actually remember when I first uploaded a video and it was a I think it was like a relaxation 20 minute relaxation video this is possibly 2006 or 2007 I forget and probably 2006 and I wasn't sure whether to do it because there were no other hypnosis videos on there as far as I was aware but most of the videos were music videos you know like bands and singers and stuff so I thought oh I wonder if it's okay to post the hypnosis video so I did I you know, uploaded it and I got loads of positive feedback and people were sharing it and I ended up getting about 10,000 views of the video within quite a short time and I was like wow this is brilliant and yeah I think uh, I think I had about 50,000 followers or friends I don't know what they were called on there like at the height of well the height I mean to be fair as soon as Facebook came into into being and was it 2007 when it started getting popular MySpace sort of slowed down quite a lot and I still stayed on there for a few years and MySpace is still it's still up and running I think but I think it is, it might not be, I'm not sure. The last time I went on there, they still had my some of my stuff on there. Some MP3s, some audios that I'd made which I'd forgotten all about. But then of course Facebook um, you know, great tool for people keeping in touch I suppose 
I was going to use the word communicating, but after 13 years of reading people's posts, I'm not sure if communicating is the right word. I think miscommunicating <laughs> seems to be uh, quite often the case, including myself as well. I've, uh, I've made a few faux pas along the way with Facebook misjudged a few situations said the wrong thing but you know I'm not that bothered I only really use Facebook to well, I've only ever really used it to promote the free hypnosis service but along the way I've made a few friends as well which has been nice but most of those people are living in other countries but then in some ways you know even people living in this country are still a long way away some of them but you know there's some people that are just I don't know, I can't even, I felt like I got to know them a bit by reading their posts. But in reality, I don't really, I suppose. But yeah, it's, it's a weird one, isn't it? I mean, I have a rule, and I've, it's upset some people along the way, is no family or friends on Facebook like real life um, you know people that I see or people that I have their phone numbers on my phone and some people really take it personal when they get deleted or unfriended even though I've still got their telephone number and they've got my telephone number And they don't, some of them didn't really understand why, why I took them off, but it's sort of a personal thing. I like the, I suppose, you know, you've got your friends, you know, when you're at school and you've got your friends at school and it's nice to have that and then you go home and it's a separate thing. Or you've got your friends at work. And then you've got your real, not your real friends, but you've got your friends that maybe you've known for a long time. Maybe you've stayed in the same town most of your life, so you're still friends with people from school. And you've grown up with them. But then you've made new friends at your job. But they're, it's a completely different bunch of people you know it's separate so I like that I like things to be separate and I, I don't know how it might sound a bit weird but I don't actually I don't really want my family listening to my recordings because I don't know, I don't know why really, it's just, in some ways, those of you that listen to these, and have been listening to me, maybe for years and years, perhaps actually know more about me than my own family do. Because although I do talk a lot of rubbish during these recordings purposely, I also do open up, or I have opened up, about, you know, my life and my dreams and, you know, a few 
silly stories from the past that perhaps family and friends don't know about because I like to keep friends separate from each other but apart from anything else it stops gossiping because the way I see it if I've got a friend he or she should only know what I tell them about me I don't feel that they should know have other information that they've been told by someone else might seem a bit strange actually but I can't always kind of been that way I just prefer it I like the idea of just having separate friends a separate kind of relationship it sort of seems a bit more special that way Yeah, I've not really ever been a group person. You know, the whole everybody knowing everyone else's business. And yeah, not, not really my thing. Plus, I'm not interested either. Which can cause problems sometimes. I think some people expect that others to be interested in what they're saying or what's you know but I'm it's not that I'm not interested in what they're saying but the importance of what they're saying is it ends as soon as I stop talking I'm not kind of thinking about it afterwards because you know so much is you hear a story and you only get one side of the story. And that in some ways is a good thing. In some ways as long as I don't take it too seriously what they've said. As someone said to me once, they said, well, isn't it? Isn't it important to know if the person's telling the truth or not? I kind of think, well, does it matter? You know, we human beings have the ability to elaborate, to exaggerate. And to kind of you know maybe see things from a certain perspective yet the other person who is maybe involved in that particular interaction may have a very different story to tell and I find when you know both the people involved in the story you get to hear both sides of the story it's a very different story and they both may expect you to take sides and to believe what they're saying which is very hard when they're both telling different stories and they both seem to believe their version of those stories 
so luckily because it doesn't affect me I don't get involved with those situations so I'm quite lucky in that way there is one thing though What is it with um, WhatsApp? I don't like WhatsApp. There's something about it. It's not the same as Facebook. It's organised differently. And I don't, not, just doesn't do it for me. And I am on WhatsApp. And my dad's been going on for months and months about joining WhatsApp and being part of the family WhatsApp group. and So I did it in the end. And that seems to be the only way they want to communicate. Which then means I'm doing what I didn't want to do originally which is communicate online in a a vague Facebooky kind of way instead of one on one communication as in a telephone call or a text which is personal one on one So I keep coming off of uh, WhatsApp. I'm still on there, but I just delete the app. And then a few days later, I'll go back on. And I see that I've got missed messages. But I just, I don't really, I don't know if people like it. kind of I suppose it's kind of like having a personalised Facebook you know by having a group where you know you've got a specific number of people and just I don't know just not not really my thing Which is okay because I don't think it was developed for me. I don't think I was even thought about when the particular app was created. And it's a great app, you know, for what it is. But it's just. It's not my bag of chips, you know. It's not my thing. It's not something that I enjoy. I just... I think some apps are okay. Uh, you know, I don't know. The, like I've got a radio app, which is the LBC radio app. And I listen to that because it's on my phone and it means that when I'm at my laptop early hours of the morning, I can have the radio on, on my phone, but it's a low volume so that I can hear it without having to turn my television on which would 
be at a larger volume so as I you know don't disturb the neighbours or anything like that I don't want them thinking I've got a party going on just in case you're wondering LBC is a talk radio channel and they just have different like lots of different conversations and uh, discussions and arguments and you know all kinds of things debates so I quite I do like it the first time I listened to LBC was when was it I think it's 1991 and I used to listen to the radio on my Walkman as I walked to work early in the morning I remember that and listening to LBC listening to the news and the conversation and it was about 30 minutes walk from my home to the work and sometimes I'd walk especially slowly because I was interested in what was being discussed but other times I'd walk a bit faster um, not you know not because the conversation uh, was not to my taste but just because perhaps I'd go out a bit a bit later I needed to get to work you know I didn't want to be late and because sometimes I would wake up a little bit later than others sometimes I'd wake up earlier I mean as I went through a period when I would wake up really early like five o'clock in the morning and I didn't have to be at work until half seven I think was the time I started and it was really good because I'd just be full of energy and I used to watch television because I don't know what channel it was on if it was BBC 2 or Channel 4 because at that time England only had four channels four television channels we had BBC One, which I think was the first ever television channel in England. Then BBC Two, ITV, which is a Right, I don't know what you want to call it. It's a commercial television channel. So there'd be advertisements or advertisements. And then Channel 4, which was the last... Yeah, Channel 4 was the last one. 
that was introduced at that time. Um, I think Channel 4 was launched in 1982 or something like that. So before that there was only three channels. BBC One, BBC Two and ITV. And then Channel 4 came along. And then in 1997, Channel 5 came along. And I remember the launch of Channel 5 because the person who hosted the launch was a friend of mine called Tim Fine. He's a comedian and he's someone that I'd known for, well, I'd known him since about 1991 and I saw him do his first ever gig at the comedy club and kind of just got to know him over the years and he's a really nice bloke haven't seen him for a long time but it was exciting to see him on television and he was basically the face of channel 5 he had about three television shows on there. And yeah, it was, it was quite exciting because I don't remember the launch of Channel 4. But I do remember the launch of Channel 5. Although saying that, we did have other channels, but they were satellite channels. So in the early 90s, possibly before that even, we had Sky, which was... Uh, like a, a satellite dish was required and there was a bunch of channels and I suppose a lot of them were perhaps from America uh, I really don't know because I didn't actually have access to watching anything from Sky until 1997 where I lived in a house where my landlady had Sky had a uh, A satellite or something I don't know I guess you must have had a satellite dish and they had Sky 1 which was the, the main Sky channel television channel and I remember there used to be wrestling on there and there may have been like Sky Movies and I don't remember because I didn't get an opportunity to watch it very often it's really I remember I used to when they went on holiday like a couple of times a year 
I would look after the house. I was living there anyway. Um, but I was, you know, I had an opportunity to sit in the living room and watch television instead of sitting upstairs stairs of my bedroom watching television and it was lovely it was so lovely to be able to just sit down on a sofa watching a big coloured television with all those channels to choose from instead of just the normal five BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, Channel Four and Channel Five. And I used to just sit there and watch the, I think the, the movies and I had, uh, I think MTV. And that was the days when MTV actually had music videos on. Because it does stand for music television, doesn't it? MTV, music television. Um, I think it should perhaps be renamed... uh, to maybe KTV Kardashians television or 16 and pregnant TV or rap battle TV or just basically anything like reality TV ish and it's a little bit of a for me it's a little bit of a shame because I used to enjoy just relaxing and watching the videos and sometimes if I was a bit tired and just maybe relaxing my eyes I'd listen to the song and to the music because that's one of the benefits of watching a a music video because even though you have your eyes closed you can still enjoy the song and it's there's still pleasure to be gained from that experience And of course, that's not always the case for every television show. I mean, for example, watching snooker or darts or tennis isn't quite the same with your eyes closed. Although it is relaxing. I like snooker not particularly as a game necessarily but I like the calmness of it you know that like the soft voices talking I mean it's practically a whisper at times and now they're hitting the ball 180 or whatever the snooker 
everything is. And tennis as well. Of course there's a bit of grunting that goes on. But it seems to be quite good natured tennis. Seems to be, you know, the audience seem in quite a good mood, which I think comes across whilst watching tennis. However, I don't understand the rules tennis I kind of do and I kind of used to because when I was young we had Beyond Borg Connors and McEnroe and they were all these massive superstars Bjorn Borg was a superstar because at that time I think he was the most successful tennis player ever at that time but of course others have come and Succeeded like much further than he did. Uh, what's his name? Oh, I forget his name, but he's won like every tournament about 500 times. And then there was McEnroe. Oh, yeah, loved McEnroe. It was just so good to to be able to sit with the family and laugh at an adult having a tantrum. As a kid, as a child, it was wonderful to have the opportunity to laugh at an adult having a tantrum. Because I suppose like most children growing up, they see adults having tantrums quite often, like their own parents having tantrums and getting angry, but the child's kind of not allowed or supposed to laugh in their faces, even though even as a small child you can see the absurdity of the situation. So McEnroe, for me, gave me an opportunity to release some of that uh, laughter, let's say. And it wasn't always laughter, but it was a mixture of laughter and feeling sorry for him and other adults that weren't able to any self-control acting like children but with adult bodies I found that quite funny I kind of still do seeing adults have tantrums But I suppose we're all able to have them at times. Oh, I'm just, what's that? I'm just watching television as I speak to you. It's on mute, so I'm not sure what's being said. There's a man poking his finger. He looks really happy. 
Now there's a lady there. A Roxy customer review. Roxy, not sure what that is. I think it's an advert for something. She doesn't look like an actor. Her facial expressions looked quite as if they're real. She's not really happy. Tens of millions of songs. Roxy. Oh, I wonder what that is. And this little stick that they're talking into. You can get them in different colours, red or black. And they're talking into them. I don't know what they're saying. Oh, there's a blue one now. Hundreds of playlists. Oh, now there's a lady doing yoga. I'm not quite sure how that fitted in. I notice whenever they show ladies doing yoga, they're always extremely flexible and fit. And they always look very slim. Never had anyone like me doing yoga on adverts. Imagine me in a leotard, bending over, trying to do the quarter lotus or whatever it's called, the cucumber roll. Florence Nightingale pose, whatever that is. I did go to yoga once, I did, I went to yoga, and it was in a Buddhist centre back in 19, no, it was 2003, probably about November, or, no, about December time, and I went along and the place was full of women apart from me being what the only man other than the man that was hosting the event or the teacher and I noticed whilst I was stretching out on the mat that I seemed to be the only person who he wasn't touching and you know he didn't push down on my hips or he didn't like try and stretch my arms or anything like that and I was like excuse me Mr. Teacher and he said, what's that? And I said, well, I was wondering if you were going to touch me as well. He said, what? He seemed quite shocked. I said, yeah, I was wondering if you could maybe touch me. My lower back feels so, so in need of a little bit of TLC. He said, I don't touch people. And were, the, the ladies looked, looked up at each other, took turns at looking at each other. They actually queued up. One person walked along, looked at each other, and then they got in a queue. The next one, at the end of the queue, started looking at each other. It was very organized. And everybody knew. what I was talking about and I thought things were going quite well I thought you know what I am now a what's it called not a womanizer a woman's liber is it lib liberator uh not pesticide, what's the word? I'm not socialist. 
Not anarchist. Not Nazi. What's the word? Um, women's rights. Suffragette. Yeah, well, that'll do. So I realised that I was a suffragette. And I felt quite good about myself. I thought, you know what? After doing this, we need to get women the vote. I remember I didn't realise I said it out loud because the lady next to me said, Oh, we've already got the vote. I said, Are you sure? She said, Yeah. I said, Yeah, but how do you know? She said, we have a female Prime Minister, uh, Mrs. Thatcher. And I said, was that, a, was that a woman? I thought Margaret was perhaps just one of those names that could be used for men and women. She said, what? I said, yeah, some names, like... Um, uh, I couldn't think of one. It's one of those times, isn't it, where you go, oh, I can't think. I said, it's like Gary. She said, no, Gary's definitely a man's name. I said, okay. Um, uh, Tracy. I said, no, that's... Oh, wait a minute. No, no, that is a woman's name. I said, yeah, but you had a little bit of doubt there, didn't you? And she said, yeah, I was thinking of... Uh, Spencer Tracy, the male actor, but that was his surname. I said, ah. Oh. I said, what about Al? She said, oh, Al, obviously it's a man's name. I said, no, it might not be. She said, yeah, Al, Alf, Alf Alfred, Alfonso. Alfredo Alan I said ah but what about Alice and she said ah you just thought of that didn't you I said yeah I know she said that was, a, that was quite a good save I said no I don't know I'm quite pleased with myself I was hoping something would come up said you really seriously can't think of any other names that men and women have I said no I can't and she says what about Sam Sam yeah, yeah Samuel Samantha what about Pat Patrick Patricia ok fair enough I, I don't know I just didn't really give it that much thought I wasn't intending to expand this this story really to the point of having a conversation about men and women's names well where did you expect it to go to and what were you what were you hoping for I don't know I was hoping to do some kind of a fart joke and um, she said, well, why? I said, well, in the actual event, you know, because this is based on a true story, and I actually was in a room full of women with a male, and he was, you know, giving all the attention to the, to the women and touching their shoulders and their hips and stuff like that. And he didn't, he didn't come anywhere near me. But I did let off a really, really bad fart. I mean, it was, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's bad if it's in public, but it's good if it's at home. You know, that's a fart I'd have been proud of if I hadn't been surrounded by it. Not just anyone really, but just by humans. 
although sometimes I do fart a bit too much and Andre literally comes up to me and says dad will you please just go to the toilet and he's a ferret and he, you know what I mean to get told that you stink by a ferret is uh, it's out of order don't you reckon And she said to me, well, yeah, I suppose. Um, but I didn't realise we were still talking. I said, well, not really, though, are we? She said, what do you mean? I said, well, it's just made up, isn't it? It's just me. It's, you know, you don't exist. She said, what? I said, okay, I'm sorry to break it to you, but you don't, you know, you're just an imaginary character inside my brain at this precise moment. She said, how can you tell? I said, but don't, 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 don't go there. How can I tell? Have you not noticed that we both sound the same? Not to me, we don't. Oh, okay. In that case, uh, what are you doing at the weekend? What do you mean, what am I doing at the weekend? Well, I just thought maybe if you fancy it, we could go out somewhere. She said, what do, like where? What do you mean go out, what? and stand on the pavement so, well, no I mean it might involve standing on the pavement at some point to get to where you're going unless you can fly she said well I did have flying lessons when I was younger I said no I was just joking I was being silly she said, what, what, what do you mean? I said, don't, don't worry, it's okay. So, um, yeah, we could go out. And she, and she said, well, just before we go any further, um, I'd like just to remain friends, if that's okay. I said, what? She said, well, I, yeah, I like you and all that, but I'd like to, you know, if we can just be friends, you know, go out as friends and, you know, just have some fun, but uh, and that that's it, just nothing more, maybe go out and play hopscotch or go and buy some popcorn why would I want to buy popcorn I don't know I just someone told me you like popcorn well yeah I imagine everybody likes popcorn and she said wait, wait a minute let me stop you there Not everybody likes anything. I said, what, what on earth are you talking about? She said, nobody likes everything. We're all different. You can't generalize like that. Not everybody likes everything. Well, I know not everybody likes everything. I didn't say everything, I just said popcorn. She said, what about the people that don't like popcorn? Well, I wasn't including them, was I? Anyway, I heard what you said the other night about popcorn. I didn't like it. 
I was just trying to give an analogy between something very tiny becoming something a lot bigger you know like pop corn she said yeah but it was just didn't didn't like what you said I was like, oh, come on I wasn't I was just saying pop corn it expands like goes pop which is quite a funny quite quite a funny uh, sound isn't it she said yeah but when have you ever seen popcorn go pop well I haven't personally seen it I've seen it on television you know I've only ever bought popcorn that was already popped well how do you know it goes pop then how do you know it doesn't Uh, true, I don't. Okay, let's go out as let's go out and have a relationship then. I don't know if I want to now. What do you mean? You just won me round with all your charm and knowledge, and now you say you don't want to. I won you round. Yeah, with all your sophistication and intelligence I realised that you're the one <laughs> you're the one that I want one that I want ooh 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 you're the one I need oh yes indeed you know I've got chills they're multiplying and I'm losing control of the power. It's multiplying. It's electrifying. 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 You better shake up. Because I need a man. All my heart is set on you. You better shake up. You better understand. To my heart, you must be true. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. You're the one that I want. One that I want. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You're the one that I want. One that I want. Ooh. 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 The one I need. Oh yes. In. Deed. Ooh. 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 I might write a book of poetry. But you didn't thought, think that was, sentence was coming, did you? If you're still listening. I like eating elephant on toast. That's another thing you wouldn't have thought I was going to say. I like to bathe with a jar of peanut butter. So now the image of me lying in a bath with a jar of peanut butter just floating at the other side of the bath. Smiling. And now 
I'm going to go and upload this. So that you can enjoy the boredom of my voice. <laughs> 